We don't need you, Labor Department. You're traitors. Traitors to the American people. Adam Smith, in his book, The Wealth of Nations, pointed out what every nation's single greatest asset is. It's the labor class. The working class. No equivocation. This is a man that devoted his life to the study of capitalism, economic principles. So if the Labor Department every year came out like that and the employers were aghast, they, what do you mean by federal law? Yeah, you can do federal hard time. You cheat your workers out of fair pay, buddy. Because they're subsidizing these farms. They're hiring all these these undocumented workers to come in and say they can't survive without them. Now California is paying these people. It's all out, man. The cat's out of the bag. Go get the application from the housing authority in your town. Go see what's on there. Are you a farm worker? Check this box. You get priority treatment. Why else are these people dying out in the cold? Suffering native-born American sons and daughters out there. Suffering needlessly, dying sometimes out in the cold. To this day, stuff's going on. I'm disgusted. I'm a good American. Disgusted. $50 billion a year goes into this program to subsidize the housing costs for those who can't afford it. And I'm some wild-eyed, radical, bleeding heart liberal to suggest, hey, maybe it'd be more cost-effective to just buy people houses instead of renting them. But no, they're forcing you and me, we the taxpayers, to rent these people houses. And it's making the problem worse. Homelessness has gotten worse. The problem with unaffordable housing has gotten worse. And it's all going in the pockets of fat cats. Do you understand how this works? Yeah, and God's witnessing it all. Believe me. And people are waking up because they're listening to guys like me. They're spreading the truth. One person. I know I got a meager audience, and I don't care. One person talks to two. Two talk to four. Four talk to eight. On and on in that theme. One little spark can ignite an entire forest. And that's what we're talking about. But ignite it in a good way with the Holy Spirit of truth. Literally, God, the hand, the finger of God. Get into the Bible, man. Get empowered with the truth. I mean, some of it's so eloquent and poetic and beautiful. You wouldn't believe I Read the book of Jude. I, I mean, you know, I, I can't, you know, I, I can't recite it off the top of my head. It's so good. And what Jesus said about, you know, these evildoers, how they are, these hypocrites, man, these elitist type. The word didn't exist or he would have used it. Okay, they're like whitewashed tombs. That men walk on it, and they don't know they're even offending these people just by speaking the truth because they being true to themselves, being true to their conscience, integrity, honor, and God, and, and all that kind of stuff. And they offend these Oh, well, how dare you? We're the religious leaders. You wonder why people hate religion? It's instinctive. It's intuitive, practically. Well, who do you think killed all the people trying to make sure the Bible was preserved to get to you? A lot of people died to make sure that book was available to you today. All you counterculture, that's what you ought to be empowered with. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth that they call the Word of God for good reason. It's the good news, man. That's what the gospel translates to. That's right, man. It's good stuff. The teaching of Christ don't get better, man. God's a good God all the way, man. Not to be blamed for anything bad. He is an egalitarian. You better believe it. He says, this is the planet I've given my children, who are his children, every single human being. There is equality. That's not something we just strive for. That's a fact. You, 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 you seize it. You seize equality. You say, I know I'm an equally beloved child of God. I'm just as precious as any, any other human being on the face of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, as it is written. You get empowered with that, man. We're going to be unstoppable. We come against these people, man. Throw them down. They, get, they want us to think that we're divided locally. and Oh, it's all grassroots. How are you going to change it? It's those damn Democrats. It's those damn Republicans. It's those damn socialists. It's those damn Republicans. It's those damn liberals. It's those damn conservatives. When behind the scenes, okay, these people are in lockstep with each other. These Congress and Senate, Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives. They're just terms. There's words, socialists and capitalists, they're all liars. 
We don't have a semblance of true capitalism. Is the mainstream media even educated? Do have they read the Adam Smith book, The Wealth of Nations? What do they know about capitalism? Will they talk? Will they talk about the VCR and how that should have happened to housing? The housing should be dirt cheap, a nominal fee at this point in history. Again, it comes back to the Labor Department. How they could have prevented this? Because employers would have complained, rightfully so. They would say, well, who's manipulating markets? Who's driving up prices unnaturally? You know, to what? who's ripping us off is what it com comes down to. Because I don't want to get ripped off. I don't want to have to pay my employees more. Then I got to charge more for my services or my commodities or the combination thereof, right? And I'm trying to compete here. So, you know, wh why, why do I have to pay my employees more? By law, by federal law, or I'll be doing hard time for cheating them. Here's your answer. So point the finger in the right direction. You don't blame the innocent workers. They don't want their cost of living driven. What do you think? They want their money watered down? What kind of idiot? They might not be the sharpest tools in the shed, but they're not freaking idiots. They want their money to go up in worth, as it should. It's called progress relative to any semblance of true capitalism. Supply and demand, competition, free market. In 2008, they bail out the criminals. Obama helped push that through mightily. Probably the he was the kingpin of that whole thing. Currency, oh, it's okay. We'll debase it, we'll water it, we'll let these criminals get away with it. Hey, they're too big to jail. They're too big to fail. Oh, they disrupt our economy. We can't have a market correction. No, we're going to do it our way. We're going to do it during the coronavirus thing. That's when we're going to do it. But even then, we'll do it as little as possible. We don't want to go down. We don't want our rents to go down. We don't want <laughs> the cost of housing to go down. You know, the mainstream media reports, it, oh, the value of your house went up. They don't tell you, hey, the worth of your housing dollars went down. And educating the public on how there's a direct correlation between the cost people pay to purchase a home and the cost people pay for, for rent. Hey, educating, you don't do the bupkis to educate the people. Are they all idiots? No, where do they get their marching orders from? The very top echelons of power. It's satanic. It's wanton. It's vast power. It's a juggernaut of pure evil. And that's what we the people are up against. And you think we don't need God to help? We do. That's why I say prayer. I mean, you know, this is how I cope and contend. This is it, man. I get things off my chest. One way or another, I got to get things off my chest. You better believe it. But it's not fair to expect any other human being to help me. I don't expect that. I expect God to sustain me. He's a jealous God. That's his job. Okay, stay off his turf. Okay, I don't mind friends and psychiatrists, psychologists and therapists and counselors and pastors helping people. That's all wonderful family. It's all great to have people talk to. I mean, that's God reflected. And it can be so beautiful and good and godly. I mean, there's people that will die for you. I might be one of them in your stead. You understand that the law enforcement's out there sticking their, their necks out every day out there. Okay, I mean, watch cops. You watch it. I mean, I remember an episode that, you know, this cop's pulling over. There's this young black guy who's on the run. And the next thing you know, I mean... He, he, he crashes his car and he pulls out a freaking Uzi and he starts shooting at the cop. I mean, that's what these people, you wonder why they're freaked out. They talk about a stressful job. You want their job? You want their job? You want How hard do you want to come down on these poor guys with what they're up against? But I mean, again, I'm not going to defend evildoers. No, you treat people with the same respect. If that was you being arrested, that's how you should treat them. And what you, how do you incarcerate them? My idea is we're going to need to get rid of abolish the entire prison system as we know it. Uh, you, want to, you want to get down to recidivism, then you put them in ethics rehabilitation centers. And the biggest issue we've got is financial desperation. It is the single biggest driver of all the crimes. And we're talking serious crime. We're talking homicides. Do you understand? So, listen, when it comes to us having a right, no, not a right, a responsibility to ask ourselves and ask one another, whose planet is this anyhow? Does it just does this just belong to a, a perpetual aristocrat class like the Rockefellers? 
and Rothschilds, the Clintons and Bushes types, and the others, you know. I mean, you can figure it out. They're at the Bilderberger Group. You, you understand who they are. I mean, Obama, look at how, what his finances were when he went into office before he was senator. He was, a, he, he was a community leader or something. And now look at him. What's he worth now? You think he didn't sell out to the New World Order cabal? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's sad. It's, I mean, we got all these people selling their souls for a bowl of rice. It's ephemeral. It's passing. It's fleeting. You're here for a little while. In, this, in the scheme of eternity, this whole lifetime is just a flash in a pan. That's it. And you're going to live for this like a dream you got to wake up from? You know you're going to. I mean, logically speaking, it doesn't make it. Why would people do this? Sell their soul, their conscience, their integrity, their honor, their reputation for a bowl of freaking rice, metaphorical rice, because it's just.